when Hollywood producers look to the future to try and predict the next big thing, a group of Melbourne musicians have hit pay dirt by going firmly the other way. There are no spectacular special effects at a bluegrassy knoll performance, just the band doing what it does best, providing a brand new live musical accompaniment to Buster Keaton films. For every C there is a D. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. At least boom, one. Boom. Boom, boom. And after every D you get a B. But it's confusing because D is still made up of A. Yeah. The ongoing success of their first Keaton project, a new score for Our Hospitality, has led to Blue Grassy Knoll picking up their instruments and starting all over again with the great silent film comedian's next work, Sherlock Jr. It's sort of nice to take another Buster Keaton film as well because Our Hospitality, in terms of his genre, is quite a different film to the rest of them. And um, it was really nice to say, okay, we've done this film, but we don't want to finish the project. The project's ongoing. Let's do another Sherlock Jr. Let's do another Buster Keaton film. Hospitality began life as a one-off idea for the Melbourne Fringe Festival in 1996. It has now toured the east coast of Australia twice and will soon be seen in Adelaide, Perth and Brisbane as well as regional Victoria. Plans for appearances at overseas film festivals are also underway. Such an expected success, however, can bring its own pressures. Well, I think one of the fears that we had was the, what band writers, um, music writers term the a very difficult second album in that you put out the first one and it's hugely successful and then you've got to move on and leave it all behind and progress and not repeat yourself and and still be happy with what you're doing so we sort of were a bit daunted i think at the start at having to yeah. start all over again this is a very difficult second film yeah <laughs> so how do you start how do you start scoring for an old film i suppose you well, we, we, you sit and watch the film, obviously, a couple of times. It's, that was our first step. And then we sat around and we talked about it um, and broke the, we, we tend to break down the film into um, different sequences, different characters, um, and obvious, obvious feels, moods that are happening within the film. And then after we watched it a couple of times, we basically didn't watch it for a, a couple of rehearsals and we just sat around throwing around ideas musical ideas and saying well maybe this could fit here and maybe that could fit there so it's quite a collaboration yeah well it's like any film like i mean you go and see any major film and the score will always have like there'll be a recurring love theme often there'll be a recurring theme when it's tense or when there's movement when there's rapid movement and i mean this is no different but you know so we sort of sat there and we sort of thought about okay we need something to like sort of say you know, every time buster and the girl are together or that, you know, that there's love in the air. We need something to sort of signify that. The audience is sitting there going, oh, yes, oh, and subliminally they're picking up this, this theme and they feel what Buster's feeling or whatever the girl's feeling. So, so that's sort of, I think that's how we've progressed, um, not having done anything like this before in our lives and never studied film or anything, just coming at purely from a, a musician's point of view our language and uh, the tools that we can use to mm. create emotions or um, just tell the story tell the story I have like um, expanded so much since we first did it and we've also been really reluctant to repeat to use the same tools again when he jumps through the window and into the dress we've got to do something there I reckon because it's a really kind of moment in the film and whose idea was it to score a film in the first place? Oh, it was mine. <laughs> we blame him. <laughs> Were you just sitting watching watching something one day? No, I'd heard. I mean, I'd heard. It's not. A, it's not a rare thing for for people to play live music to sight films. And it, I just heard. I think at the Adelaide Festival a couple of years ago. Um, and I don't even know who it was now, but someone famous from overseas came over, and, and I heard someone raving about it. And I said, "Wow, that's a great idea." Bluegrassy Knoll had only been together as a band for six months when they started scoring Keaton films. Yet the project has had a huge influence on their other work, with Buster Keaton fans coming to see their regular gigs and vice versa. But it's quite a different discipline, isn't it? Playing live and playing to a film. How do you stop the band overwhelming what's going on on screen and just getting off and doing your own thing? You've just got to remember it. You, I mean, you have to realise that the only reason we're sitting in the cinema is because Buster Keaton 70 years ago made this film. And so you, you keep on, in the end it's easy because 
I mean, you sort of know that when you're overplaying, you can feel it, you can hear it, you can sense it, because you're watching the film as well. And I think that sort of bounces back on a live performance, because we do, we're happy to take a back seat for Buster Keaton. But then when we're playing live as a band, it's like, this is us now, we can actually... <laughs> We can be the centre of attention and, and I think the whole band really loves to perform live and, and not just stand there and play music, but we actually sort of get into it in a theatrical sense as well. Now I know everybody asks you this, but the name, is it to do with JFK and library oh, diplomacy? Yeah. It's confidential information, you can't speak about that. <laughs> but if you have a very close look at um, the autopsy of JFK, he was wearing finger picks, and I'm not saying anything more.